All right, I think we're going to get started. Welcome to the 130 panel uh, for songwriting. We have an amazing panel today. Um, it's a really packed um, class. This is awesome. Should we call it a class? <laughs> really? All right, cool. Um, you guys having fun today? Yeah. yeah. So a lot of you really want to songwrite, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Super important. Well, people I have on this panel have song song written a lot. You're going to learn a lot. I'm the moderator today. My name is Teresa Cirillo. I'm the owner of Studio E Music and Arts in Stony Creek, and I'm also uh, the author of Shameless Plug, ready? The Vocal Compass. This is my book. Um, coming out in it's Shameless Plug, yes. Nicholas, I'm warning you. Come on in. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> I'm going to introduce the panel today. All the way to the right, we have Dre. Dre Powell is a singer songwriter. Somebody with a water? Thank you. Thank you very much. We have Jeremy Weiderman. It's this battle of do I. <laughs> you guys can clap. They're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> They're, really awesome. They're like, what you got? What Sometimes you got? Show us what you got first. <laughs> we have Bronson. <laughs> and we have Tomsey with us today. Okay, let's, sorry, just because of my OCD, we have Drake. <laughs> We can clap for you yet. <laughs> All right. So, uh, really, really cool questions. I think what we'll do is we'll go through the questions that I've prepared for everybody today, um, and then, oops, breaking chairs, and um, and then maybe we can even open it up to a question and answer at the end. So, um, as you know, I'm a vocal instructor, but I've spent the last five years writing for a number of artists as well, in Toronto and Hamilton area. Um, so I know a little bit about uh, writing music, so I've come up with these questions because these are the questions that usually I get asked and I love answering them because they're very simple um, and you can get a lot out of them. So um, let's start all the way at the end first for Dre. Um, what are some things that you look to for inspiration in your writing? Anything specific? That, I'm going to go through all four of you, so same question, all four of you. Um, yeah, just what are some things that you look to for inspiration? I mean, I've, I've done the thing where I'm like, okay, I'm going to go, it's time to write a song, and then I sit down, and every time I do it, I've, I've kind of trained myself to be able to come up with a song, but I just find that that is the worst way to come up with something that's meaningful or good. Um, I feel like the songs just kind of come, and the best ones are usually from hardship or something, some sort of struggle I'm going to through. I think it's something I use as more of a meditation and more of a therapy. That's when it's good, I find. Um, more real, authentic experiences. Okay, perfect. And Jeremy? Um, I agree with a lot of what he says. Um, I've tried being like absolutely miserable and that worked pretty good. And I've, and That now, songs come out through being miserable. Yeah. You rock bottom, write a song. Yeah, but I'm also now in like a way better phase in my life where I feel happy and healthy and everything, and I've been writing better music than awesome. I've ever written. And I think it's really like there's no rules. It's like whatever you find, whenever you find the most inspiring, like when you play something and it really resonates with you that you like, that you're happy with that, you kind of want to just take note of what's going on and how, like, you know, what you did to get there, what time of the day it is, what did you eat for breakfast, did you have, you know, did you exercise before, um... I find a lot of inspiration in picking up instruments and gear that I've never touched before. So if I like grab a new pedal that I've never played with, or I'm picking up somebody else's guitar, I'm always very aware that like something really good might come out, and I'm always ready with my phone and a voice memo to like capture it because I forget everything immediately. As that's soon super as... important. Write so, that down, everybody. Well, that's a that's a big one because like I had my phone stolen and I didn't have it backed oh. up, and I lost three months of songwriting right before we were about to do a record. And it was an it was an emotion that I've never experienced before in my entire life. Like I was like I wanted to barf and cry and like swear and it was just it was the worst. So record everything and back your phone up. <laughs> and then you said something really, really cool is when you find like when you get new pedals or something new that you want to try. So are you saying like not to stay stagnant in in things that you're utilizing that to make to give you a little bit of inspiration to do so? I just find that works for me. Okay. I, I I don't really like using pedal. Like 
when I play live, I have maybe three pedals. I don't use the pedals that make me write songs. I don't usually end up actually using for the song, but it just ends up, it just works for me. I just, I pick up a guitar, I pick up a pedal, I play through someone else's amp. Uh, sound check always works really, like for some reason I always end up writing amazing riffs at sound check and then I have to like scramble to like pause sound check for a minute while I like record the riff down so I can work on it later. Um, yeah, I work in really short bursts and then I, I leave it, I always, I bank everything and save it for later. Awesome. All right, Robson, so what do you, where do you look to for inspiration? Uh, I'll follow up with Jeremy there on uh, basically other music is the biggest inspiration for me. So uh, specifically new music or like Jared said, kind of new toys or new instruments. So anything that's going to take it outside of the box that I'm used to is something that's going to be inspiring for me. Um, yeah, anything new. Because I mean, it's like, who are we kidding? Songwriting is essentially just being inspired by other music and regurgitating it in your own way, right? So. Uh, I can't imagine writing a song and not ever hearing music before. Right. So who who um, gives you that inspiration? Who? who... And that's the tricky question. Yeah. I don't know because it's usually people that I haven't heard before. Oh. So I mean, like a lot of you know, you have your stuff that you you grew up on or the stuff that you listen to regularly, and I mean, you could recite that and probably play that. Right. No problem because it's in your head, right? So all that stuff's in there. It's the stuff that. Um, you know, you get somebody tells you about some act and you go check them out and you hear some cool guitar sound and then all of a sudden you're like, cool, I want to try that or that made me think of something else that now I want to try doing that sound on the piano or something like that, right? And it just gets the ball rolling. Once the ball is rolling, then you're in a good spot. Nice. So I look to other music for inspiration. I love that. And Posey. Um, so I feel like at the base of songwriting, what you're doing is your putting emotion to music. Um, and to do that, at some point you have to start with lyrics. And so to practice doing that, I think a really good thing is journaling. If you're not journaling already, you should probably start. It's super easy, you can go to chapters and get a cool book. And then um, you can journal right when you wake up. Or what I've been doing recently is like journaling um, all of my dreams, because like that gives really cool ideas. Um, another thing that I have found works really well is if you take like some of your favorite quotes or books or lyrics that you already like and cut them up um, so you have like little strips of words and put them in a box and then um, go through and like just pick out a word and maybe like that one word will spark inspiration. I've written like an entire song from just picking out one word. Um, so that's a really cool trick. And then also just talking with your friends because um, the reason that we all make music is because we want to make people feel something um, and what better way to empathize with what other people are feeling than to talk to them about their problems or the things they're really excited about in their lives. Um, so yeah. Thank you. You guys all got that? Perfect. Um, I know with, uh, with music it's really easy to immerse yourself and Kind of be drowned in it so the next question really deals with how out of outside of music what are the kinds of things that keep you creative so what do you do out of music or out of songwriting that keep you creative because sometimes like you can be writing for four hours and you feel like as creative list as you've ever felt in your life so what do you do out of songwriting away from songwriting to keep you creative. You can start with Posey. Cool. Um, I read a lot. I really like books. Um, so I think that's a big one because um, you're using your brain and you get to imagine being in different places and taking on different perspectives. Um, I also really like yoga because um, it's like a form of meditation where you can just like chill out. If you've been writing for like 90 hours and nothing's happened, you can just sit down and have a relaxed day with yourself. Um, and also just like being outside in nature or like people watching, like go take the bus somewhere for like an hour. <laughs> that's, that's that's a good way to relax, I think. Awesome. Uh, going outside for me is a big one. Mm -hmm. uh, I like, uh, I have a nice garden at home and I like to garden and uh, yeah, nature's funny that way because it's, it's nature. It's kind of got its own creativity and it follows its own rules, but it's, it's surprising sometimes. So it's very natural. And, it's nice to be in that environment and um, actually people watching, so we see what we <laughs> People watching is another good one because, uh, you know, it's, it's, 
that's almost inspiring for me too because you just watch people and you kind of I've always been like okay like where is that person going tonight what are they doing and then you can just like make up your own thing in your mind based on what they're wearing or what direction they're headed and next thing you know you're starting to write a song or, or whatnot right so, very cool nature yeah. um, I found a, a big uptick in my creativity when I started doing yoga it was big I it sucks it's like six in the morning it's like the hardest thing I'll do all day and I get out of the way and then I go to the rehearsal space every day afterwards. I don't ever really try and get, I don't ever get bogged down in writing too much because I never write for more than five to 10 minutes a day. It's literally just like a, like I'll get set up at the rehearsal space, I'll play guitar for five or 10 minutes without trying to write anything. I'll just be warming up and playing. If I hear something that I like, I'll record it and then I'll try and forget about it. I've got, riffs from a year ago I haven't listened to and so when I go back to listen to them it's like somebody's giving them to me so I don't remember that I even recorded it it's like kind of a gift to myself that I've forgotten about and then when I listen to it back it's easier to tell whether it's good or not because I don't have any personal or emotional attachment to that riff like I don't write lyrics so it's all it's all music based so yeah if I hear something I like I'll be like ooh that's cool and then I've got to learn it which is sometimes I've actually had to get help relearning something particularly difficult that I can't remember how I did it. Um, but yeah, I don't get bogged down because I, I never, I just try and play guitar a lot and I don't try and write on purpose and I work in very, very concentrated bursts. Cool. So when you take um, that creativity from the yoga, what is it about yoga that does that for you? I, I couldn't put my finger on it. it I, I definitely leave the studio feeling accomplished and positive and I have time because it's still like 7.30 in the morning to like make a good breakfast. Rehearsal doesn't start till like 10 or 11 in the morning so I already feel like I've conquered the day so it's I think it's just really going into the rehearsal space with a really positive outlook on everything and like I said like I've, I've I spent years being absolutely miserable, drunk, everything and I got some great songs out of it but it was fleeting and it was miserable. Like who wants to be miserable? Who wants to have to be miserable all the time to, to do their work? And so now trying the other side of that and being where I'm at now, it's a lot more fun and fulfilling and I'm getting better music. I'm getting- It sounds like you've really focused on being authentic. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I've ever known any other way to be really. Maybe when I've been in other bands and I've done other people's songs, I was kind of fitting a mold of some kind, but about 10 years ago, I stopped doing that, and ever since then, I've been like stubbornly, like, do I'll do what I want to do, and if that's not what everyone wants to do, then they can go away, yeah. kind of thing. Very good. Very cool. Dre? Yeah, I agree with Jeremy in terms of like, I try not to obsess over the songwriting and not do it for too long, and I try to do it when it doesn't feel like work. Like, I've been a part of songwriting groups where it's like, okay, you go in the morning and you don't come out until the song's done sort of thing. And we would make music, but it's just, it wasn't great in my opinion and the whole mental health of it all just wasn't a positive experience for me. So I'm a big fan of, I mean, I'm not a yoga person, but I love meditation. I literally just sit in a corner and shut the lights off and put some music on and just sit there and clear my mind. I think it's the stillness and the blankness of it that kind of, Thanks for your words. Yeah, it's Well, as a yoga teacher, <laughs> I really like your answers. <laughs> um, and, and it's true. A lot of people don't realize how much, like yoga, when you say yoga to people, people think, wow, you can do the splits and you can do can't inversions can't do like and you're bendy. <laughs> no. That's not it, guys. Yeah, yoga is just like what Posey said. It's, it's very equal to journaling. It's a meditation. It's a moving meditation and it's basically focus focusing your mind, so totally all relative, love it. Um, great. So this is really interesting. I see, I mean, I've been on like planes and seen people writing on planes, but where is your favorite place to write? What environment like, do you like to surround yourself in to write? Is it like, do you make it a ritual where you have to write in a certain spot or do you like to write everywhere? Do you have a favorite spot? So you guys can speak to that. Um, let's start with Jeremy. Um, I never think about, I never think about it where I am really. It ha a lot of it happens, a lot of it happens at sound check. 
because it, it's the most inappropriate pain in the ass time <laughs> of course. to come up with a great idea because everyone else is making noise. I've got voice memos where I'm like trying to pick out what I'm doing between like drums getting checked and like someone ringing out a monitor. Like it's impossible to tell what I'm doing and like had to drag a riff out of it because I was really excited about it. Um, uh, my favorite place is to write in my phone. I love, I have three, over 300 ideas in there. I think I've used 30 of them. Please tell me you have iCloud now? Yeah. Okay, great. I did before. <laughs> I was just, that was back when I was drinking and being miserable and I just hadn't plugged it into a computer or been on Wi-Fi. There you go. Um, but yeah, I, I like my phone. I like having it in my pocket. I like it. I, a lot of times if I'm on a plane and I don't have an internet connection, that's a great time for me to go through everything and I'll make notes. I'll listen cool. to 200 riffs in four hours and I'll note all the ones that hit me in a certain way so that when I go back home, I'm focused to work on those specific ideas and take the rest and, you know, clear, clear it out. Nice. Dre? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I put too much songs to the location either, but like a lot of songs I find get written driving, like melodies. I come up with a lot of melodies driving because I drive a lot. Um, and showering, to be honest. Yeah. Those are the two spots. And it's shower annoying. seems to be one it's of those things. It's annoying because, like, there's so many times where I'll have an idea and I'll get out of the shower to voice memo it because I have the same thing where I forget everything. So, yeah, I'm not, it's not like I have a, a magic spot. I like weirdly writing as much as I can on paper and with a pen because mm -hmm. um, I do have that fear of losing my phone or, like, I'm forgetful. I'll leave my phone here, you know, so, you know, sort of thing. So, I do pen and pad as much as I can. And Ronson? Uh, yeah, like these guys are saying, it's kind of like the, the creativity chooses the spot, not you choosing the spot. You just kind of, it comes when it comes, and whatever you're doing, you kind of got to do it. So, phone a lot of the time. I'll be hanging out with my kid a lot of the time. A lot of my phone recordings have my kid in the background playing or saying, Daddy, Daddy, please stop. <laughs> uh, I want your attention That's a good now. Song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There seriously. you go, there's a the song. Um, but it's funny because reading your question earlier in the email when you sent them ahead, um, I mean, my ideal situation is to have a functioning studio where everything's plugged in and all I have to do is sit in, there's several instruments around, walk in and just hit record and grab this and grab that and grab that. I've been spending it's like 10 years and it's like I picked up a little bit of gear, gear here, a little bit of gear there. Still haven't fully put it together because it's hard to just get your own space and have it all be working all the time. It's like an impossible dream. But hopefully one day that's the ideal situation. Just walk in, idea, recording. Keep it going, great. You know what I, mean? I think you should there. schedule that. <laughs> yeah, schedule that I build should. studio. <laughs> Check. How about you, Pussy? Um, well, when I was in high school, I used to write a lot in class. I don't know if I would encourage that. Um, but now I do like a lot of co-writing with people, which is like a really new thing for me. Um, but I, I think like in terms of the space itself, just like somewhere where you feel like comfy and you're not like rushed and stressed. And I also am a big proponent of the pen and paper method because I think I wrote with someone recently and they were like typing it out on their laptop and I was like, this feels so weird, I can't do this. But it works for some people. So just find like what makes you comfortable. Very nice. Okay. So this is really cool because I've, I've written with so many different genre musicians. Do you find that when you write, do you find that your genre, that your music always sounds kind of like the same? Does it follow the same progression, same feeling, same emotion? Or do you find that like you're completely in like different ends of the spectrum? Just a thought, what do you think? Like, does it all sound the same and it, it drives you crazy? Or do you want it all to sound the same? This reminds me of the question a while back, or at least Ronson's answer about listening to music for inspiration. I almost purposely don't listen to rock music so that I don't bite other people's stuff. Ah, I listen to a ton of hip hop and I try and stay away from that because of, I don't want to plagiarize accidentally. And I also find that I come up with better ideas trying to build off of other songs that we've already made before and trying to find new ways to revisit the same ideas. Um, but I also end up writing, I've only got a couple pop songs, I've got a bunch of different ideas that don't fit the, you know, the riff rock, you know, uh, genre at all, and I just try and keep track of all of them, because one day I hope to work with other songwriters. I always have to work with a vocalist. I'm, my songwriting happens with a, in a team, 
with our vocalists, so I don't do the lyrics. I'm actually very lucky because I'll just write a cool riff that maybe isn't even that cool, and then our singer will sing on top of it, and all of a sudden the riff's awesome because it supports the vocal. So, um, yeah, having a different bunch of different genre ideas is a great way to eventually hopefully reach out to other people who have the skills to make those songs better. Awesome. All right. Anybody else have an answer for that one? How about you? You're, you're very specific. You're a very specific sound. Do you, do you find that your your song sounds streamlined? Or? Um, I mean, like, I would, I would consider myself, like, an alternative rock artist. And I think, though, when you start to feel like your songs are sounding the same, like, I, I find that sometimes just because when I write stuff, like, alone, I write on just, like, a keyboard and, like, I'll voice note myself singing on it. Um, so in that sense, it'll sound really similar because you're listening to just the same voice and the same piano. Um, but then once you get, like, other instruments involved and you have that collaboration, I think it can really diversify it. Because um, I, I think that's cool, and I, I don't think just because you're, like, in one genre it doesn't mean you can't write a song that sounds super different. Like, I've been working on stuff for um, a new project, and I have one song that's more of, like, an electronic-y almost song, and one song that's a really grungy 90s rock song, and I feel like you can do both. So never feel like you have to limit yourself. To one well, that's the thing, too, because if, if she all of a sudden has a really great song that all of a sudden works really well with maybe the other artist she's with, or even success-wise, all of a sudden your doors start opening because of this one song, which can happen all the time, that all of a sudden is going to take you on a journey to do more songs like that, and maybe that's what you were looking for the entire time. Mm -hmm. So it's, especially as a new artist, it's a, almost mandatory that you delve into a couple different ideas because what you think is your favorite might not be your favorite and what you think is suited to you may be something different and you've got to try a bunch of different things before you find that thing that either resonates with you, resonates with your audience, or resonates with the band or the group of people that you're with. Right. Yeah, I think, I think collaborations is massive. I mean, from my background, I listen to a lot of, my favorite bands are with people like Oasis and the Arctic Monkeys and Three years ago, I was writing Latin songs with the Spanish artists, so, <laughs> which was a great thing because like it was a super new vibe for me at the time. And when we would go to the songwriting, my my attack was like Noel Gallagher inspired. So it was bringing a new vibe to things. Yeah. I think that's what makes it fresh. And then also the fact that the, the producer that we were working with for a long time was very jazz trained, and I don't have any jazz training. They're some of the most talented people in music, so it's good to have both. Varieties and different sounds. Yeah, make original. It'll make it original. Absolutely. And Rodson? Yeah, a lot of what these guys are saying. Um, I mean, I think too. Uh, it's something else I guess I can add is if you're in a group or if you're doing something that is linear, you know, you're doing your one thing. Um, don't be afraid to do other things in parallel with that or off to the side. There's, you know, like. I think Jer and I both kind of grew up in in an act where loyalty was key and it was very from when we were uh, young and it was just kind of like this is the band, this is what we do and this is the only thing we do and I kind of regret not doing other things because um, I just I feel like I just missed out on that other stuff, you know, like inside there's a whole other thing than like what was it you were just saying about? Uh, you know, you're, just, you're playing just, somebody else's music kind of thing, I was right? just thinking and about, okay, like, so just backstory. Me and Bronson used to be, like, to in a band it. together with a guy who wrote most of the songs and the lyrics. And it was, like, kind of his show. We would support him. He was really good, is really good. But he, like, Bronson would always be working on, like, funk jazz, like, funk yeah, bass yeah. lines, like, before... Rehearsal started. Yeah, and they were, sound check. And they were awesome. And I'd be like, I'd be like, like, yeah, I'd be like joking with him all the time. So he used to be in a funk band, you know, and I was probably over off on the side playing like Led Zeppelin yeah, riffs yeah, yeah, and like, yeah, totally. you know, trying to play rock, like classic rock music, you know, both of us wanting to go in like these other directions. Meanwhile, we're doing like a pop rock band. So I'm just laughing because I'm, I'm remembering like Ron's sitting in the corner like playing yeah. funk jet like funky bass lines and being like go do that. So yeah. So do other things. Yeah. yeah don't lock yourself in. Don't lock yourself in. And that's in. what happened. I went and did another thing on its side and it was a side project. It was Monster Truck was on the side and then all of a sudden I was like this is what I want to do it's all the time. <laughs> and then I was like and I left and it was sad. But what was it? Was sad. I was sad. You were sad. Yeah. You know, you can always come back together and write together again. Me and him know? could definitely write together. Yeah. 
And uh, your answers were all amazing because it was a perfect segue into uh, my next question. This is really cool. Uh, coming from my experience in teaching artists and vocal coach, um, I found with artists and teaching singers that they get a little um, funky about allowing other people to write with them and like sharing. And I know as a professional musician that collaboration is super important and essential in the music industry today. I would love for you professionals to please speak out to our youth about collaborating and sharing music and in songwriting. So can you guys do that? Um, <laughs> work start? together, boys. <laughs> no, it's, I'm the most stubborn guy ever when it comes to outside influence from people I don't want it from. And that's can put up a wall inadvertently because maybe those are people that you probably should be listening to. If you're working with them in the band, you should be listening to everybody and you should be flexible and check your ego at the door and be able to... And why should you though? Like you Because you don't know everything. Should, right? Because you don't know everything. I've been wrong as many times as I've been right, probably more times than I've been right. And I only have written amazing songs with other people. Um, that being said, you can get too many cooks in the kitchen. Next thing you know, you've got a good idea getting taken off the track because someone has to. You got to be careful that your opinion isn't just there because you want to have an opinion. It's got to be inspired. It's got to be something that you actually believe is going to make the song better. And that's where it starts and ends. It's you, the song should be something unto itself that you're serving, and it shouldn't be your. Yeah, it shouldn't be your ego. It should be how is this going to be the best song ever. And if you're actually thinking about that and not just being like, I want my opinion to be part of it, blah, yeah. then that that can really special things can happen. But it's a really fine line between I want my opinion and you know I actually have a good opinion. You've got to check yourself on that. So one do you think it's important in an environment that um, that a lot of cooks are in the kitchen to stand your ground and say no, no, no? This I'm is, really thinking that this is super. It's a Central fine line. You, song. you be honest with yourself. Yeah. Is it do you do? You, is it a good idea? Do you actually can you feel, can you picture it? Is it set, like can you actually see it in your mind's eye that it's going to make the song better, or are you just wanting to say something right. because you haven't yes. said something in a while? And that goes for not just songwriting. That goes for life. <laughs> no, like great you advice. just you need to zip it <laughs> and and save the moment of opening your mouth for something that you actually know for a fact is going to push the project, whatever it is, <laughs> forward in a positive way. Because I'm getting emotional about it because I've been in songwriting sessions like <laughs> where someone is sitting there going like, I think they'd be going like that. And I'm like, and I know in my heart they're just saying something to say something. And that's when you gotta stay on your ground. Yeah. It's when you can sense that you know that this is the right direction and this person's kind of getting, you know, and that's when it gets heated. Let's get heated in here. And it, I've been there 9,000 times and I'll be there 9,000 more and, and it, 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 it's where great music comes from and you just, you're gonna, you're just gonna have to fight it out. Nice. So Posey, you just said that you just went from like writing on your own to collaborating, mm -hmm. right? So how has that created a positive um, out, outcome for you? Yeah, so I used to be really nervous to co-write with other people. It wasn't that I like didn't want to collaborate, which I think is the case with like most people because like when you start out as a songwriter, everything is really personal and like you're writing about that guy who just broke your heart and why would you want to tell a random stranger about that? Cuz that's really hard. Um, so what I have found that's helped me get more open to it is like instead of cuz I've been to a couple songwriting sessions where you get in there and it's some random person you've never met and they're just like, "Let's make a song." And that's weird. Nobody wants to do that. Um, so if you're trying to write with other people, even if it's just your friends or someone that you know from class or something, just like sit down and have a conversation with them and find out like who they are and like what their parents are like. And then you'll feel like you know them more. And then they start to feel like a friend instead of just like this weird business transaction that's happening. And then you'll probably make a better song out of it because maybe they feel similar things to what you're feeling, which led you to write that song in the first place. And I can say 100% now that I've been co-writing a lot, um, like my music has gotten infinitely better and I actually prefer co-writing now to yes. writing by myself. Drea Ronson, do you want to speak to that? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I got all excited when Jared was talking because he was taking the words right out of my mouth. Um, but I mean, I, I'm 
I'm a, a co-writer exclusively, like I write collectively and, and also do production, producer work, which is, you know, they call it song doctoring sometimes. So I'll work with acts where they come in, they've got their songs, and it's not quite there, good. you know? <laughs> yeah, not quite good. So it's got to tear, tear it apart, right? And for some people, tearing it apart oh. is just tearing them apart. And so a lot of times I'll just preemptively say, like, look, like, you can't take this person. Okay, so like, yes, it is your art, it is personal, but don't, like, you have to look at yourself objectively all the time. You have to be able to be critical of yourself, because if you're not critical of yourself, you're not going to be able to accept criticism from others, and, and you're going to miss the constructive criticism, right? So um, serving the song is the thing that Jer kind of said, where it's just Serving like, the song. Serving the song. Always serve the song. Don't serve yourself. Don't do it because you want to add your piece to that. Do it because that's what the song needs and it's really hard to figure that out sometimes um, I was I'm working with a band now called Pineapple Girls and um, we were writing some new stuff and the way I described it to them was you know think about a sculptor who's taking a piece of rock and there's an image in there somewhere there's a sculpture in there somewhere and you chip a little piece away and you kind of get a better idea of what it's gonna look like, right and everybody kind of needs to be on the same page as to what that sculpture is That's, going to look like. It's got to start there. It's got to, it's the, got to the conversation there. has to be at the beginning of the session. What are we doing? Mm -hmm. Are we a rock band? What do our fans look like? What do you look like on stage? Mm -hmm. What is the what is the direction that we are trying to go? Because if you don't have that, if that's not a clear, like if we don't know where we're trying to go with this band or this artist, you're, you're going to be just toiling in confusion trying to make a song better when you don't actually know like what, making a song better, what that actually means is different for 18 different genres of music or 18 different styles of people. And so if you don't have that, like most producers will sit down and try and untangle all the personal stuff first. Because if they know that the guitar player hates the singer or the bass player is dating the drummer's girlfriend, then the, it's, you're, it's, 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 it's over. Like you're never gonna, you're never gonna write, you're never gonna write a song from there. So it's like, yeah, it's what are you doing? What are you trying to do? And when you have a clear cut vision of where you're trying to go, the answers for how to make a song better start to show themselves. And the best songs ever get written when it's easy. When it's like, wow, we know what to do with this part. Just obviously go to the bridge and then guitar solo, another chorus and we're done. And that's, and you know that because we're a rock band and we play three choruses, one bridge, one guitar solo and... Out the door. All right. Awesome. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just, everything's pretty much been said, but I think it's, I try as much as I can to have a relationship in some capacity, knowing the person doing the songwriting. I've done both. I just find it's much better when we're on the same page and comfortable, because at the same time, it's this battle of, do I let that go, or do I, am I so passionate and, and I know this will make the song that I need to fight for, and it's like... Sometimes you're like, this is the best thing for the song, and the other yeah. person obviously thinks the other thing. So you need to have that some sort of connection where you guys can be civil and talk about it and not just be emotional and have those background things like, oh, he said this two weeks ago, we're friends, I'm pissed at him for it, so I'm just going to fight him on everything sort of thing. And you don't want that. Anybody who says, I was wrong, as soon as you have someone you're working with that was like, I was wrong, it's better your way, work with them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so collaboration equals or adding emotion equals a thumbs up. <laughs> so collaboration creates emotion, which is a good thing for music. Um, all right, so we're on, um, we've got about seven or eight minutes left. So I have one last question for our panel. And then um, if anybody here has a question regarding songwriting uh, that I haven't asked yet, um, I'll get uh, a few people to ask questions. Specifically, if you can even just choose one panelist, that'd be awesome. But the last one is a super simple one. Everybody asks me, I love the question itself. You can answer it in one word, maybe five. Lyrics or music first when you're writing? That's a big one, right? Which one comes first, the chicken or the egg? So music or lyrics, Posey? Um, I feel like a lot of the times they happen at the same time, okay. but probably music first. So the melody? Alright. Ronson? I'll second that. Music first, and usually there's got to be like a couple words in there that are yeah. directing the feel of the thing. So two music, two melody, zero for lyrics. Alright. I just wrote the first zero. song that we've ever, well, we, me and John just wrote the first song 
that we've ever written together with lyrics first, where he was singing at me the idea that he had for the chorus, and I could hear the chords that needed to be behind it immediately, and I did it, and it worked, and now we've got a song that is, I think it's a great song. It needs tons of work still. Um, it's almost always music first, but if someone's got a, a, a key line, like a great line and a great melody, that can be infinitely stronger than any chords you could string together, and it'll dictate the rest of the song. So you kind of get off on a head start if you got lyrics first. Music, you're in for more work, and it's probably gonna still work out, but if you've got that line, you've got that, you know, like, if Taylor Swift sat down and was like, had Shake It Off at the very beginning, like, you're, think about how, how far ahead you are now. That song's done. <laughs> you just need to put a drum hole. Yeah, just fill the holes up. You got, you got the line, Shake It Off, get a good drum beat there. And, you know, That's awesome. It's true. So, yeah, yeah I don't know. I, you do both. Lyrics, you, lyrics just start stronger. Okay. Melody. Melody? Most yeah. of the time I'm mumbling the words. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll be yeah, pronouncing yeah, the yeah, syllables, yeah, like what, what words I feel. Yeah, yeah. And then sometimes I'm like, oh, that sounds like that word. So I guess that's the word we're going to put in there. And you almost write the words through mumbling and doing the melodies. I mean, that's what Amazing. I find happens. Um, I'm going to add my two cents in. As, uh, and coming from an educational perspective, I have a lot of students that don't play instruments. So um, I get a lot of students that come in with poetry or lines and then um, and then they start to make a melody and then the music comes behind it. So if you do have lyrics already written in your journal, because we all know we're supposed to be doing journaling and yoga, um, take it to somebody that does know about songwriting and maybe you'll have a really great song. So um, thank you guys for such great answers and insight on songwriting. Does anybody have really good questions? Good anybody? bad questions are good. <laughs> Welcome to Songwriting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You need to take like two hooks and smash them together. There you go. You got to you got you got to have two that don't have anywhere to go. If they're in different keys, change the key of the one and just and if, and if it doesn't work you'll learn something trying to make it work even though it doesn't. And you just and just keep going back to it. Eventually something's gonna click up. I always try and leave stuff in front of me all the time. I do graphic design too. I like to have it up or listening or around me at all times even if I'm not paying attention to it because all of a sudden you'll be making spaghetti and you'll be like, I know what to do with that. All of a sudden out of nowhere for no reason. Cool. Anyone else? Questions? Right back. ACDC? That's a good thing. I don't. I don't. Get away from music. That's usually uh, Yeah, I try to listen to music sometimes for like, I'll, I don't try not to, but I just don't for like a month. You know, or I listen, I'll have like one album I like, but I'll only listen to that. But sometimes I just actually walk away from it and try to be, it sounds really stupid, but I actually try to be inspired by my own band. Because sometimes some of the older stuff we have, people resonate with that more than our newer stuff. So I start to listen to the older stuff to be like, why are they liking this older stuff that I think sucks more than the new songs that I think is awesome? And trying to get back into the headspace I was in when I was writing the old songs eight years ago. Cool. Last question? Do you have a question? Yeah, yeah go ahead. What are some songwriting cliches to Cliches are good, they're like hits for sure. <laughs> yeah, I think that's really hard because if you look at like all the biggest songs so throughout like all the way back to like the 50s, like everything was a cliche. So I think you can still use them, but um, if you like spin them in a way that sounds different or you put them over top of like a really, really catchy phrase, like I think it can still work. Yeah, you can get away with it. You can get away with murder, as we're seeing every day on There are radio. no rules. <laughs> there are no rules. That's right. Well, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Dre and Jeremy and Ronson and Posey. Please give it up to them.